All right, 2-2. We're going to talk about domain and range of different functions and how they work together, what they mean, um, and especially as they get more difficult in deciphering, looking at a graph, figuring out its domain and range, or from a domain and range, being able to draw a graph that matches that domain and that range. Um, so first, we're going to define what a domain is. So the domain of a function is just the set, the set of all the values of the independent variable. The set of all the values of the independent variable. And for our purposes, that's always the x value, OK? The range is the set of all values of the dependent variable. And for our purposes, that's going to be the y value, OK? In function notation, it's also going to be called the f of x value. Okay, so now we're going to look at a couple of graphs, um, and these are graphs that have a restricted domain, and then we're going to figure out what is the range that goes with that restricted domain. So here's our restricted domain. First, when we draw, we're going to ignore that. We're going to ignore it for a second, and then we're going to come back to it. So this is the equation of a line. The slope is positive two-thirds. The y-intercept is negative one. So negative one up two over three up two over three, up two over three, and so on. Going backwards, we get down two over three, down two over three, down two over, okay, let's put that. Down two over three, down two over one, two, three, down two over one, two, three. Okay, so it looks like this. This would be the graph. If we were to simply graph the graph, graph this line, and there were no restriction. And if this were the entire graph, notice the domain could be anything and the range could be anything. These y values continue to go to bigger y values forever and ever. So they will hit a y value as they go up to positive infinity and down to negative infinity. So our range would be all real values. Okay. I wrote that really light because we have a restricted domain that now we have to deal with. Now we're saying we only want the part of this line where x is greater than zero. So here's our x-axis. We look at this graph for everything to the right of the y-axis, the y-axis, everything to the right where x is positive, that's where x is greater than zero. We have to make this an open circle because we can't include an x value of zero because it says x is greater than zero. So this is our line. We want all these values. We have to erase. Erase everything to the left. And we'll erase this because that no longer applies. Okay, so open circle here. There's our graph with our restricted domain. Now, because of that restricted domain, notice our y value no longer goes down to negative infinity. This thing does not continue this way, hitting all y values down to negative infinity. The lowest y value is negative 1. So the range is the set of all y such that y is greater than zero, uh, not greater than zero, but greater than negative one. Because here our y value is equal to negative one. That's an open circle, so it doesn't quite hit this y value of negative one. It stops just before. Okay, if we want to do this in interval nota notation, you could say all the y values from negative one, notice parentheses, because we're not including the negative one. We want negative one all the way up to positive infinity. Both of those are open circles. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, so for this one, we want um, y equals 4 over x. But we only want this graph when x goes from 1 to 4. So let's first look at the graph and see what happens to this graph if we pick some x and y values. I'm going to pick uh, let's say when x is 0, because I'm going to pick some positives and some negatives. When x is 0, we get 4 over 0, which is undefined. So we have no graph. Okay. 
when x is, let's say, 1 and negative 1. When x is positive 1, we get 4. When x is negative 1, we're going to get negative 4. When x is positive 2, we get 2. Negative 2, we'll get negative 2. And let's do 4. 4 over 4 is 1. Negative 4 over 4 is negative 1. And this is a negative 2 there. Okay, so let's graph these. Again, we're going to come back to this in a second. So 0 is undefined. We have something called an asymptote here. Okay? Um, and let's, let's first graph these and see what that means. 1 comma 4 over 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 comma 2, 4 comma 1, 5. Okay. Now, if x is positive, even if x is positive to infinity, this thing never goes negative. So our y is never going to go negative. It's actually never even going to hit 0. So it's going to keep going this way. And then... Um, if x is positive, even if it's a positive really small number, let's say positive 1 half, 4 divided by 1 half, well, that gives us 8. 4 divided by, let's say, 1 tenth, and that's going to give us 40. So these would go up this way, and we'd have an asymptote. We're going to talk about asymptotes in the next section. Okay. Now, if we were to graph the other side, we have negative 1, negative 4, negative 2, negative 2, negative 4, negative 1. And we would have the same thing going on over here. Okay, notice I'm drawing this really lightly because I'm going to have to erase parts of this graph. Okay, so um, now we only want the x values between 1 and 4. So here's where x is 1, 2, 3, 4. We only want this section of the graph where x goes from 1 to 4. Okay, we don't want when x is bigger than 4. We don't want when x is less than 1. So we can get rid of all this over here. Okay, Let's kind of emphasize when x is 1, y is 4. When x is 4, y is 1. The only part of the graph we want is in here. That way our domain is between 1 and 4. So we have to erase everything else. Let's get rid of everything else. So our entire function, because of this restricted domain, is just this little section here. Now we want the range that goes along with this little section here. We'll look at our y values. Now we have to look at where it hits the y values. Our y values go from a y value of 1 up to a y value of 4. Right? So we've got the set of all y such that y goes from 1 to 4. Now notice we're going to include the 1 and we're going to include the 4. Or if you want to do interval notation, it's just from 1 to 4. The brackets mean we include the 1 and we include the 4, okay? Now, let's go to the next page. If they get a little bit more interesting. Oh, here's one. It's a little different. Now, notice our restricted domain is just integers, just these particular integers. Okay, so first, let's graph it. This is y equals x squared. We know what y equals x squared, x squared plus 1. y equals x squared is just a parabola opening up, correct? Okay, so if it's plus one, it's just going to be shifted up one unit. So we've got a point here, over one, up one, up one, up one, over two, up one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. If we're to go over three, we've got three squared, one, two, three, up nine, left, 1, 2, 3, up 9, okay, and we would connect all these points, okay, but with our restricted domain, we don't want to connect the points, we only want to plot this graph when x equals negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, so let's simply plug in those values, negative 1 is this one. Oh, we don't want when x is negative 2 or negative 3, because those values are not in our domain. We have to get rid of these two points. Okay. So our y values are only, and we don't want to connect these because we, if we connected these, we would be including x values in between these integers, and we can't because the restricted domain says not to. 
Okay. So our total function, our total graph consists of one, two, three, four, five, five points. So our range is just this set. We could say it's set of all y such that y equals, and now we need the y values, y value of one, y value of two. This one has a y value of two. We don't have to list it twice. So one, two. This one has a y value of one, two, three, four, five. And this one has a y value of 10. Okay. Now, since these are integers, if you want to simply write it as one, two, five, uh, five and 10, that's fine. I don't like how they wrote that there. This one, you can't write an interval notation because our answers are not intervals. They're simply these specific um, discrete values, okay? So now we're gonna go on to these and we're gonna do something a little different. Before we do that, yeah, let's look at these. So the domain for this function, now you have to write the domain. The function's given, you have to write the domain. So we have to look at the X values that are contained in this graph. Now our X values go from here it looks like to the left, there's no x values past here. So the furthest to the left we go is that looks like negative 8. Okay, so our domain, I'm going to write this in interval notation. Negative 8. And then it looks like it hits x every x value until we get over here. But nothing to the right of here. So what is the furthest x value to the right? And that looks like it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So to 5. And it includes that value. That's a closed circle. Now, the range is my y values. How far down does this graph go? Does it hit a y value of negative 10? It doesn't. The graph is above. It's way up here. It looks like it doesn't even hit a value of negative 5. It hits negative 3. It looks like it does touch there. Okay. So the lowest y value is going to be negative 3. It looks like it touches, and we include that value. Okay. All the way up to this y value up here, which is a y value of 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice we don't hit any y values above there, okay? Now there's this one over here. I'll leave that one for you all to do. Okay? But I'm going to show you this one. I, I made one up that's a little bit more complicated and shows a little bit more um, things that might come up when you're doing these, okay? So if, assume this is all one function, okay? It's not all connected, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be connected. But it's all one function. All these values are part of one function, okay? Now let's look at your x values. Your x values, there's no x values to the left of here. You can see, make sure you see there's no graph over here. So the furthest left we go is negative 4. We hit a value. We don't actually hit negative 4 because that's an open circle, okay? Um, so let's write this in interval notation first, and then I'll show you how to write it in um, set notation. So we go from negative 4. Notice we get to here. We actually never hit an x value of negative 3. So we have to go negative 4 to negative 3. Don't include the negative 3. And then we pick up again at negative 3. We go negative 3. Now watch this. We hit all the x values from negative 3 to here. There's an open circle at negative 1. So it's almost th you almost think you wouldn't include negative 1. But this, and remember, this is all part of the same function, this actually does hit negative 1. So we do hit all the values from negative 3 to negative 1 and so on. And we keep going until we get here to 4. So negative 3 to positive 4. And we do include the positive 4 because there's a closed circle there. There is a point on this graph, which is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, negative 7. So we have to include that and our x values in our domain. Okay. And then there's a space here. Now notice we can't just say all the values from negative 4 all the way to 10. There's an interval in here between 4 and 8 where there are no x values. So we have to show that those x values are not in the domain. So now we could pick up over here and all the values from 8 to 10. And those are both open circles because we never hit an x value of 8. We never hit an x value of 10. If I want to write this in set notation, set of all x such that... I could say x goes from negative 4 to 4. You might be thinking, well, what about this value? There's no negative 3. 
negative 4 to 4. We'll include the 4. We don't include the negative 4. And x cannot equal negative 3. That takes care of this. Okay? So this and x equals negative 3. And then we've got this over here. Or x could also be between 8 and 10. Okay? And that's our domain. Two different ways to write it. This is sufficient. I actually think that's easier. Okay. Now let's go to our range. Um, I'm running out of space here. Let's do this. I'm just going to do the range over here. I'll do interval notation. It looks like we hit y values from negative 7. We don't hit anything less than negative 7. But we do hit all the y values from negative 7 up to positive 4. Now, I know you might be thinking we've got these open circles. Don't we get rid of negative 5 and negative 3 and positive 2? Okay, do we? Is there somewhere else on the graph, another point on the graph, that might have a y value of negative, negative 5? Oh, yeah, it's right there. So we have to include negative 5. We, not because of that point, but because of this point. We have to include negative 3 in our range because there's a y value of negative 3. Not there. But there, remember, this is all part of the same function. We have to include a y value of positive 2. Not because of this point. That would have been no, but we do have a point here. So our range is all the values from negative 7 up to positive 4. Uh, we include that. Or, now watch here. This is interesting. We've got a y value of 8. Okay? It's not really an interval. We could write it as an interval, the interval from 8 to 8. Okay. Not including, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> doesn't look like that. It's going to look like from 8 to 8. And we'd have to close those because we want to include that value of 8. It's weird to write an interval when it's just one value. So instead, you could have said negative 7. To negative or to positive four and then you just sometimes you just have to write something that makes sense or y can be equal to eight okay if we wanted to write this in set notation we'd have the set of all y such that y goes from negative seven to positive four we include the negative seven we include the positive four or y equals 8. Okay. So I know this one's not in your packet. I just wanted to give you this one that was a little bit more complicated so that you could see it. Okay. Let's go back to the problems in the packet. Um, I'm going to leave you alone on this one. You can check your answers when it, um, if you want to check these notes. I will have it done by then. So here we've got a domain x is all the values from negative 6 to 4. So we have to hit every x value from negative 6 to 4. Let's make this a little bigger. Make it nicer for you. Um, and the range is all the values from negative 4 to 3. Okay. So there's not one correct answer. There's lots of answers that would have this exact range. You just have to make sure that your answer, in fact, has this exact domain in this exact range. So the x's go from negative 6. There's negative 6 to positive 4. So our graph somehow has to start here and end here. Okay, but the y values have to go down to negative 4. Okay, so down to negative 4. Okay, up to positive 3. So we've got to be somewhere in this box here. Negative 4 to positive 3. And the x's go from negative 6 to positive 4. Sorry, these graphs did not show up that great, did they? Okay, so negative 6. Uh, and here's your negative 6 here. To positive. Oh, sorry, that's your x values. X goes from here, negative 6 to positive 4. That's your X's. So on the X-axis, negative 6 to positive 4 
and then your y's go from negative 4, so here, positive 3. Now I know I'm drawing this box here, so you know your graph fits in this box, okay? But at the end, I have to I have to erase these lines that I just drew. And the reason I have to erase them because you don't want to portray that that's actually part of your solution or part of your graph. So it's tempting. So this you would think is that because of this here, you would think that it's an open circle where x is negative 6. But if you start down here, there's a problem because your y value has to actually hit negative 4. Hmm, what can we do? Can we go, can we start up here and make that a closed circle? Uh, no, we can't. We can't make that a, I mean, open circle because we can't include the negative six, but we have to include the y value of three. So what if we started somewhere else? What if we started here with an open circle? We know the y value has to go up and hit positive three at some point. So let's go up and hit a positive value somewhere on the graph. We also have to come down and hit a y value of negative three. Now notice it has to be a function. I can't loop back and think, oh, I'm gonna go back and catch a point I didn't catch because it wouldn't be a function. We need to come up with a function. Okay, and I think we can do this. I think we're actually allowed to use this point down here. Let's double check. Okay, make sure that doesn't go vertical there because if you make it such that it doesn't pass the vertical line test, then it's not a function, okay? Okay, there we go. So if you gave this to your friend and said, okay, don't show them this, don't show them the domain and range, and you ask them to say, look at this graph and tell me the domain and range. What they would write down better be this. Otherwise, you didn't do it right, okay? It looks like this. You would say, okay, x goes from negative 6 to positive four. We don't include the negative six. We do include the positive four. That's our X values. Boom, perfect. You'd say our Y values. So start at negative four. We go down to negative four and up to positive three. And it looks like we include the positive three. Boom, negative four to three. Okay, so now, like I said before, let's get rid of these extra lines that we drew because those are not part of our graph. That just kind of helped us, okay? Um, and let's just do this other one. I'll do this one a little bit quicker, okay, with a little bit of trial and error. So x goes from negative 2 to 3. Okay. I'm going to actually do these. Negative 1, negative 2. I'm going to label these differently just because this is so small on here. And the y goes up to uh, from 1 to 4. So 1, 2 three, four. Okay. So X goes from negative two to three, negative two to three. I need an open circle here. Okay. Um, I can actually start at one, can't I? No, I can't start at one. I can't include that. I could start at four if I want, or I could really start anywhere, just not at positive one. Okay. So here I'm going to have open circle at four okay x has the value has to go over to three um, and i think here i can actually go down and hit the value of one and do a closed circle let's just make sure that works so now our x value goes from negative two to three don't include the negative three negative two do include the positive three that works the y's go from positive 1 to positive 4. We do include the y value of positive 1. So this y value of positive 1. And then we go all the way up to positive 4, but we don't include the positive 4. So that looks like that works. All right.